بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. The topic that we're going to look at today is a very important topic revolving around an act of worship that if we can get some of this act of worship we will find many benefits in our life. But this act of worship it is quite difficult. Not many people do it. And there's a variety of reasons for that. But what we're hoping to do is to address this by looking at some of the multiple rewards, the many rewards associated with this act of worship. And to look through the lenses of the righteous people, how they are with this act of worship, so that we can hope to emulate them in their behavior and their outlook. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith narrated by Imam Tirmidhi, Alaykum bi qiyam al-layl, fa innahu da'bu salihin qablakum. وَقُرْبَةً إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَمَكْفَرَةٌ لِسَيِّئَاتٍ وَمَلْحَاتٌ لِلْإِثْمِ The Prophet ﷺ said, Upon you is to establish the night prayer, Qiyam al-Layl, Tahajjud, the night prayer, because verily it is from the way of the righteous before you. And it is a means of drawing close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is a means of removing your sins. And it is a means of preventing one from falling into sins. So just this hadith alone is quite sufficient for one who ponders it to encourage him or her to look for how to pray this Qiyam al-Layl and to start to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow him or her to be from those who get some of this act of worship from time to time, if not continually for the rest of their lives. And of course, it is from the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, that early on in the revelation, after receiving just four chapters or so, the Prophet ﷺ was commanded, Just four or so chapters of the Quran, surahs of the Quran, revealed to the Prophet ﷺ, and the Prophet ﷺ is early on in his mission, commanded to stand up in the night prayer and to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says a few verses thereafter that we are going to reveal upon you something which is very heavy, meaning the revelation of Islam and the mission that the Prophet had to perform for 23 years, an extremely difficult mission. So what is the link, I ask you, between Qiyam al-Layl and Allah telling the Prophet وسلم, that we're going to re reveal upon you something which is heavy and difficult. What is the link? Exactly. Qiyam al-Layl is a preparation for the soul. It's a connection between the soul and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the one who has a strong connection with Allah وسلم, will be able to fulfill the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala easier. Will be able to complete the tasks that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. That is why... The Prophet ﷺ and those with him were commanded with Qiyam al-Layl in the early days of Islam. A student of knowledge, seeking knowledge, seeking the knowledge of hadith, once spent a night with Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah ta'ala, the Imam of Ahl Sunnah. Imam Ahmad left for this person some water in a bowl before leaving him in the night. He came back to him before Fajr. And he saw that the water in the bowl remained the same. So the Imam, he said, Subhanallah, rajlun yatlubul ilm, wa la yakunu lahu wirdu min al-layl. Glory be to Allah in amazement, he said. A person is seeking knowledge, and yet he doesn't have a portion of the night where he prays to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see the relationship between being productive with the early generations and the worship of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. They would connect worshipping Allah in the parts of the night, in the latter parts of the night, with being productive in seeking knowledge and being productive in benefiting the ummah. <coughs> but today, what do we see? We see people are ready and they're excited to go out and protest about something. They're happy to protest, which at times is a good thing. I'm not saying it's altogether bad and wrong. At times, it's a good thing. But many of these people, when they go out to protest and the time for Salat al-Isha has come, for example, they delay that Isha and many of them don't even pray it. They go to these protests and they mix with so many haram things. The women and the men are mixing. There's music playing in the background. 
Some people are even dancing. What is my point? The point is that if you want to be productive, you have to have the belief like the belief of the early generation. You have to have the actions like the actions of the early generation, like Imam Ahmad, Imam Malik and others. And then you will be able to achieve what they achieved. Your actions should emanate from correct belief. And you should have correct actions like they had. So the more you come close to the early generation in belief and action, the more you will find that righteousness will permeate through the earth and we will be guided as an ummah. That's why Imam Malik, Rahimullah Ta'ala, the Imam of Medina, he said that the latter part of this ummah, the later part of the ummah, meaning us, will not be rectified except by that which rectified what? The early part of the ummah. And what rectified the early part of the ummah? Correct belief based upon the Quran and Sunnah and action. They acted upon their knowledge. A lot like us today, we just love to hear, we love to listen, we love to read. We collect information, but the information doesn't translate to knowledge. It translates to knowledge once you act upon it. One of the quickest ways to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through this act of worship, getting up in the night. The Prophet sallallahu or the believers are mentioned in the Quran, these believers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them. He said they remove themselves from the sides of their beds. They remove themselves from their beds. And they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of hope and fear. And from what we have provided them in terms of wealth, they spend. So what is the description of these believers first and foremost? That in the nights, they remove themselves from their beds. And what happens after that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that he has rewarded them in an amazing way. That nobody knows what their reward consists of because of the virtuous act that they used to do. So you know that many of the rewards that we, many of the acts of worship we do, right? The rewards are mentioned to encourage us, etc. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is saying for that this group of people that get up in the night and they forsake their beds for the sake of Allah azawajal, from them, for them, their reward is hidden. And you can imagine when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, I've hidden something for my slaves to reward them, it's going to be something amazing, different from all of the other rewards, right? So this is an encouragement from Allah Azawajal to encourage the believers that they should forsake their beds whenever they can to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the latter part of the nights. You may ponder in the verse it said that the reward from them is hidden. Imam Ibn Qayyim, he asks and he deliberates as to why was this reward hidden. The act of worship is hidden. Many a time your family won't even know what you're doing. Because you've crept out of the bed. You've left them sleeping, enjoying their dreams. But you've crept out of your bed and you've gone to a quiet place in the house to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the rest of the world is still. The night is still. Everyone is sleeping. There's nobody around. Nobody knows what you are doing. For that reason, you have hidden your deeds and only made it known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, the reward is also hidden and known only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the Prophet Sallallahu has mentioned some possible rewards. For example, in the hadith of Tirmidhi, the Prophet Sallallahu said, إِنَّ فِي الْجَنَّةِ غُرَفْ تُرَى ظُهُورِهَا مِنْ بُطُونِهَا وَبُطُونِهَا مِنْ ظُهُورِهَا The Prophet Sallallahu said, Verily, in Jannah, in Paradise, there are rooms. Now don't think of rooms like your villa, these small rooms that we live in. Rooms in Jannah are going to be something which is expansive, huge. تُرَى ظُهُورِهَا مِنْ بُطُونِهَا وَبُطُونِهَا مِنْ ظُهُورِهَا the outside of them, from the outside you see inside, from the inside you see the outside of that. The reality of that, we don't know what that means, but something amazing. So and a Bedouin, he stood up, he said, Ya Rasulullah, liman hiya? Liman hiya, Ya Rasulullah? Who are they for, O Prophet of Allah? The Prophet Sallallahu said, liman atab al-kalam? For the one who beautifies his speech and makes his speech gentle and beautiful. Wa at'am al-ta'am? And the one who feeds food to the poor and those who need it. وَأَدَامَ الصِّيَامِ And the one who continually fasts is if, if he is able to do so. وَصَلَّ لِلَّهِ بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّاسُ نِيَامِ And he prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the night whilst the people are sleeping. So these amazing rewards in Jannah for who? For the ones who do these actions and specifically for us looking at the ones who get up in the last part of the night or any part of the night and they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
The Prophet وسلم, in the hadith narrated by Imam Al Hakim, he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves three categories of people and smiles at them and is happy with them. Three categories of people, Allah loves them, He smiles at them when He sees them, subhanAllah, and He's happy with them. One of these categories of people is a person who has a beautiful wife and he has a very comfortable bed. So he leaves alone his beautiful wife when he's sleeping and he leaves alone his comfortable bed and he gets up to pray for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala smiles at him and he says that this one has left his desires for me and had he wished so, wished so he would have continued sleeping. So the Prophet ﷺ is telling us that the person who gets up from his bed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala smiles at him. And what do you imagine is the situation of the one who Allah looks at and smiles at? The Prophet ﷺ explained elsewhere. He said, The Prophet ﷺ said that if your Lord smiles or laughs at one of you or one of the slaves, then know that there is no accounting for him in the hereafter. He will not be taken into account. This person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves him so much because of the deeds that he does, may Allah make us from them, that he won't be taken into account in the hereafter. When I mention in this hadith or a hadith like this, that Allah smiles or laughs at his slave, isn't there a problem here? Am I not likening Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the creation? Am I not giving Allah attributes of the creation? No. Why? Exactly. This is the qaida. This is the rule. There is nothing like unto Allah, as Allah mentions in the Quran. Nothing that you can imagine in your mind is Allah. Yet He has the attributes of seeing and hearing. So He does have attributes that we have. But of course, the likeness between them are a likeness that you cannot imagine. I mean, the difference between them, sorry is a difference so far that you can imagine, cannot imagine. So whenever Allah is described with an attribute that seems to be an attribute of a human being, just don't let that thought come to your mind. Okay? It's, it's something which you cannot imagine. So we are not likening Allah Azawajal to the creation when we mention these things. This is an important point of aqidah to remember. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith that the night prayer is a means of removing the sin and are a means of its prevention. The Prophet ﷺ said, Atani Jibreel, فقال, Jibreel came to me and he said, Ya Muhammad, Ish ma shit fa inna ka mayyid. Oh Muhammad, live as long as you want to live, but you're going to die. Wahbib man shaita fa inna ka mufariquhu. And love whoever you want to love, but one day you're going to leave that person. Wa'mil ma shit. And do whatever actions you want to do, for verily there will come a day when you are going to be rewarded and taken into account for those actions. And know that the honor of a believer is when he gets up in the night to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And his, what's the translation of is? And his dignity is when he has abstinence from the people. He has no need for the people. He seeks his need from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the hadith here is telling us that the way to have honor is to get up in the night and to pray to Allah azawajal. And when you do that, get up in the night, you won't have need for the people. Why? Because you're in the company and the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a true way of gaining honor. Look, the Prophet sallallahu said in Bukhari and Muslim, Allah Azawajal descends to the lowest thirds of the heavens every night when the last third of the night remains. Who is calling upon me in dua that I may answer him? Who is asking from me that I will give him? Who is seeking forgiveness from me that I will forgive him? So the one who gets up in the night to worship Allah, does he need anything from the people? He doesn't need nothing from the people. He won't even think to ask the people. He will take from Allah, the one who owns the bounties of the heavens and the earth. The one who gives 
however he pleases, to whomsoever he pleases. So this person is free and this person has honor because he's connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What happens to the faces of those righteous who spend these moments worshipping Allah in the last third of the night or any part of the night? Any idea? Have you ever seen somebody, sometimes you come across a righteous person and his face is bright. It's literally like he has a light inside of his head. He's so bright. Uh, Saeed ibn Musayyib, he said, for example, one of the Imams of the Tabi'een, he said, it may be a, that a person prays at night and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes light to emanate from his face so that whenever somebody meets him from the first time, that person falls in love with this person and says, truly, I love this person. This is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that those who get up in the night, Allah puts light in their face and light in their hearts, light in their souls so that when people meet them for the first time and that person has iman, he is attracted to that person. That's why sometimes when a sheikh comes to visit and you sit with the scholar, you can't help yourself but being mesmerized by him. You're just overwhelmed. It's because of that fact that he's getting up in the night and worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, Imam Ibn Qayyim, he said, due to this light that is found in the faces, faces of the righteousness, it was found among some of the righteous women that they would get up in the night and they would worship Allah regularly. And it was said to them, why do you do this? They said that when we worship Allah, Allah puts beauty in our faces and that's what we want to attain. You want your wife to be more beautiful for you? Get her up for, in the night prayer. Allah will give her a beauty that will astound you. May Allah make us from the mameen. What time is the night prayer? What time does the night prayer start? Youngsters, what time does the night prayer start? Qiyam al-Layl. Any other youngsters here? The last third of the night, but you're not that young. Very good, excellent. The last third of the night, the night prayer starts. That's not altogether correct, but it's a good answer. I'll tell you why it's a good answer. When does it start? After Isha. The night prayer starts after Isha. Tahajjud, Qiyam al-Layl, is considered any time after you've prayed Isha. Okay? What the brother was referring to is the best part of Qiyam al-Layl. The best part of the night, like we mentioned with Allah Azawajal, descends, is the last third of the night. How do we determine the last third of the night? How do we work it out? After Maghrib, the night starts, so we do what the brother is saying here, but we do it from Maghrib. We go from Maghrib to Fajr, we divide it by three, and the last of those thirds is that time that I am referring to. The Prophet Sallallahu one of the things that he would do when he would get up in the night to worship Allah Azza wa Jal is that he would use the miswak. Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman radiyallahu anhu mentions in Sahih al-Muslim Kana and Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ida qama min al-layl yashu sufahu bisawak The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he used to get up from the night or for the night he would clean his mouth with the sawak. Why? Why is he cleaning his mouth? Because he's refreshing himself, he's putting himself in the best of states to speak to Allah Azza wa Jal and that's a reminder for us that when we come to worship Allah جل, we should sometimes be careful at what we are wearing. Allah says in the Quran, خُدُوا زِينَتَكُمْ in the كُلِّ masjid. Take your adornments when you go to the masjid, meaning when you go to worship Allah جل. I'm not saying you have to dress in a particular manner, but I'm saying that we should try to think sometimes that look, I'm going to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I should beautify myself a little bit. Imam al-Bazar, he mentions, and Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala said that hadith is authentic, that when a person gets up to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, an angel comes to him and stands behind him and listens to his recitation of the Quran. And the more the person continues reciting the Quran, the angel comes closer and closer to him until the angel puts his mouth on the mouth of the one who is reciting the Quran in prayer. And all of the Quran that is being recited goes into the jawf, goes into the inside of the angel, showing you the sharaf of the Quran in the prayer, showing you the honor of reciting the Quran while standing in prayer. And therefore the ulama, they say, we should ensure that we are clean of mouth when we stand up for prayer with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why the Prophet said, لَوْلَا أَنْ أَشُقَّ عَلَىٰ أُمَّتِي لَأَمَدْتُهُمْ بِسِوَاكَ in the kulli salah. Had it not been difficult upon my nation, the Prophet ﷺ said, the one who was full of mercy, he said, I would have made the siwak obligatory at every prayer. It's not really difficult, right? But the Prophet ﷺ saw it as a difficulty, a possible difficulty if it was made obligatory. ﷺ. How many units are the night prayer? Meaning, how many raka'at? It's narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha, our mother, Ummul Mu'mineen, in Bukhari al Muslim, 
ما كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يزيد في رمضان ولا في غيره على إحدى عشر ركعة. That uh, Aisha رضي الله عنها, she said that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, whether in Ramadan or outside of Ramadan, he wouldn't increase upon 11 ركعات in his Qiyam al-Layl. And there's other authentic narrations which say 13. Okay? In times of Taraweeh, which is also Qiyam al-Layl, but in Ramadan, okay? The majority of the ulama, they say you can pray whatever you wish, meaning the majority opinion is you can pray 20. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ said in Bukhari and Muslim, Salatul Layl, Mathna, Mathna. The night prayer is in twos, two and two. وَإِذَا خَشْيَ أَحَدُكُمُ الصُّبْ صَلَّى رَقْعَةً وَاحِدًا تُوْتِرُ لَهُمَا قَدْ صَلَّى And if one of you fears that the dawn is about to come upon him, Fajr, then he prays one raka, making what he has prayed witr, making what he has prayed odd. So where's the evidence now for the brother's opinion where he said you can pray what you want to pray? Which is correct, if you really wanted to. Ahsant, jazakallah khair. Because in the hadith there's no specification. The Prophet ﷺ said, Salatul Layl, night prayer, mathna, mathna. Okay, it's two by two. And if one of you fears that the dawn is about to come upon him, that Fajr is about to come upon him, then he can pray one raka'ah, making all of what he prayed before, witr, odd. Okay, and the Hanbali scholars, they allow for the least of witr to be one raka'ah. Thus, Qiyam al-Layl, you can pray it with just one raka'ah, according to the Hanbali scholars. How much of the Quran should be recited? As much as you want, right? As much as you want, as much as you can. It's narrated that in one Qiyam, that they would pray nearly the whole Quran or the whole Quran. The Prophet ﷺ, he said in the hadith in Abi Dawood, Man qama bi ashri ayatin. Man qama bi ashri ayatin. Whoever stands up to worship Allah with 10 verses of the Quran, lam yuktab min al ghafilin. Then this person, will not be written down as being from those who are negligent, those from those who are heedless. With how many ayat? Ten. Ten verses, right? وَمَنْ قَامَ بِمِئَ آيَةٍ قُتِبَ مِنَ الْقَانِتِينَ And whoever prays to Allah with a hundred verses, he is written from those who are obedient from the qanitin. وَمَنْ قَامَ بِأَلْفِ آيَةٍ قُتِبَ مِنَ الْمُقَنْطِرِينَ And those who do a thousand are written from those who go and search for the qintar. And the qintar, according to the majority of the linguistics, is an amount which is roughly 4,000 dinars of gold. By reciting what? 1,000 verses from the Quran in your prayer. And the Prophet ﷺ said in some of the narrations, qintar khayru min dunya wa ma fiha. That this qintar, this amount, is better than the world and all that it contains. And Ibn Hajr al-Askalani, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, that from Surah Al-Mulk to the end of the Qur'an is a thousand verses. So if you were to recite in your Qiyam Al-Layl or just in the night from Surah Al-Mulk to the end, that would be a thousand verses, meaning that you have obtained a qintar. What if somebody has the intention to get up for the prayer? He has that good intention, but for some reason he didn't get up. What's his situation? He's still rewarded, right? Because Allah is so bountiful and so generous. The Prophet said in the hadith collected by Imam Nisa'i, Man ata firashahu, wa huwa yanwi an yaquma min al layl, yusalli, fagalabatu aynahu, hatta asbaha, kutiba lahu ma nawa, wa kana naumuhu, sadaqat at sadaqatan alayhi min rabbihi. The Prophet said, whoever had the intention to get up in the night and to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but then his eyes overcame him, meaning sleep overcame him until he woke up for Fajr, then he will get the reward for that which he wanted to do. And his sleep for him will be a charity from his Lord to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So have the intention. Create the intention in your heart. Even if you find it difficult to get up, with a sincere intention, you will get up. And also, if you don't get up, look at the rewards that Allah still gives to you. The joy of conversing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the righteous, they narrate to us. They say that the joy for us is such that we cannot wait for the day to finish. It's the others for us, right? We cannot wait for the night to come so we can sleep and then for the day to come again. So we can start our joy during the day. They say the righteous, we cannot wait for the day to finish so our joy can start. Start when? In the night when they get up to worship Allah One of the Salaf, Sulaiman al-Darani, he said, 
أهل الليل في ليلهم ألذ من أهل اللهو في لهوهم ولولا الليل ما أحببت البقاء. He said the people of the night are experiencing more pleasure than those who are in frivolous activities. And had it not been for the night, I wouldn't have wished to continue living. Listen to the expression that he's saying. The people of the night, their enjoyment is incomparable to anybody who enjoys himself during the day doing whatever he's doing. And had it not been for the fact that I can pray to Allah in the night, I wouldn't want to have continued living. That's his expression. That's the expression of a truly righteous person. May Allah make us from them. So we know that this Qiyam al-Layl, as I mentioned in the beginning, is not something which is easy. How can it be easy when Allah has given these immense rewards? How can it be something which is achieved so easily? But it's easy for the one who's willing to make that struggle. It's easy for the one who's willing to be sincere with Allah Azawajal. May He make us from the Ameen. One of the Salaf, he said, Kabatu Salah Ishrina Sana, Watana'amtu Biha Ishrina Sana. He said, I struggled and persevered with the night prayer 20 years. He said, 20 years I struggled, and then the next 20 years I found an enjoyment which was immense. So it took him 20 years to reach what he felt was an immense pleasure. We were expecting it after one night or two nights or a few nights. It took this man 20 years. What are some of the things that can help us to get up in the night prayer? All of us are struggling, me and you, everybody. What are some of the things? Yes, Akhi. Going to bed early, and that's something which nobody will let you do, right? Going to bed early, you have to be strict with your family. You have to train your family. That if it's even on the weekends, you know weekends we tend to have this issue whereby, okay, now it's the weekend, it's party night. We're going to stay up until 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, get an hour sleep, and then maybe get up for Fajr. Why not flip the script? Why not say, okay, the whole week I cannot get up for Qiyam al-Layl because my work situation is difficult. It's hard for me, right? I can get up for Fajr, alhamdulillah. So why not on the weekend I flip the script and I say I'm going to go to bed on time. So now I'm going to have that enjoyment of the Qiyam al-Layl on the weekend. Wouldn't that be something beautiful like the brother mentioned? What else? Eat less, right? Why eat less? <laughs> the less you eat, the more you can move, the more you can function, the sharper you are, the easier you can jump off of the bed. Like they say, the more you take from the dunya, the more you are dragged down to it and you cannot, your soul cannot rise up to be from those that float around the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to make your body light. You have to make your soul light. Brother, you're going to say something. Dua, ahsant, very good. Without dua, without begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this bounty, forget it. Don't expect that it's going to be from you. Any good that comes to us in this dunya or in the akhirah is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So beg Allah Azawajal continually and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us some of that joy, some of that experience. What else? Something which is very important. Get your wife to wake you up. If she's awake, huh? May Allah bless her if she is. What is the, what is the narration if the wife wakes you up? Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laughs at you. And how does she wake you up? Sprinkling water, right? Remind her, not a bucket of water. Just sprinkling some water. And vice versa if the husband does it to the wife. What an amazing situation. SubhanAllah, may Allah make us from them. So... From the most important things, without a doubt, is to leave alone the sins. The more sins we have, the less likely it will be that we will be able to get up and worship Allah Azawajal. Like we said, this is something, a gift to those that Allah loves, to those that Allah is pleased with, to those that Allah laughs at and marvels at. And it's not really going to happen to those of us who are engaging in so many sins. Now don't feel dismayed. All of us fall into sins. All of the son of Adam, they fall into sin. And the best of the sinners are those who repent. What I'm referring to here is the major sins. You know the major sins in Islam. If, if we are falling into those, we should have a, a, a panic attack taking place. We should try to avoid them. The minor sins, I'm not saying they're okay to fall into. But still with those, you have hope that Allah will forgive you and you will be able to get up and enjoy that worship which we have been speaking about today. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anything which was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any mistakes and shortcomings from myself and shaitan. If you have any questions on the topic, then feel free to ask.